<laughs> I've been looking forward all week for this sermon. Um, and the title, the title of the sermon is that you are being prepared to discharge great authority. Amen. Welcome, Pastor Malabiska. Welcome one and all. Uh, it's, it's good. It's good to be in the presence of God. Everybody believe that we're in the presence of God? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So it's Amen. good to be in the presence of God. Because the dead are not in the presence of God. But God, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. So it's good to be in the presence of God. I want to thank God today for all of you that's here. That's here. <laughs> Even that extra tone of worship. <laughs> you give God glory. Yes, um, today's sermon is, is, is um, entitled, You Are Being Prepared to Discharge Great Authority. Uh, I'd just like to take time to welcome Sister Carol. I haven't seen her for a while. And uh, uh, welcome her to our presence. Um, and two carols are here. We have double carols. Carol and carol. <laughs> double carol. Okay, so welcome everyone here, everyone in particular. And um, everybody who follow Christ. We have um do you when we follow Christ and we get saved, do do we know what's beyond the veil? The promises that are laid before us. There are great promises laid before us. In Christ, the Bible says, "Eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard of the things that God has prepared for us." And to this end, I want to lift the veil that we may see the promises that are before us, that we may sharpen our endeavor to hold on to that which God. As set before us. We are called unto glory. We are called unto glory. As I said, this title of this sermon is You Are Being Prepared to Discharge Great Authority. Ah, there are some questions that shall be answered today that's going to really strengthen and empower us if we lay hold on what the scripture has declared. Because God has chosen you from before time began. You were created for a purpose. Nothing that caused you to receive salvation was an accident. God carefully planned and wonderfully planned every event that led to your salvation. Even down to the atoms that were in your vicinity. So God taught fully. He planned your redemption because you are precious in his sight. And he has elected you for a mighty office in the kingdom. Today, I'm going to lay before you promises that are mighty, which are declared for believers, God's sons. You are a very special creation of God because many, 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 many are called but chosen. Chosen are few. And I believe that in the midst of this place there are people that are Chosen. Because you are being prepared to discharge great authority in due season when you have received the crown of life after you have run the race that is set before you. Therefore, child of God, keep pressing towards the mark of the high calling of God. For God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man, that he should repent, has he said, and shall not do it, or has he spoken, and shall not he make it good? He 
will make it good on his promises. Not even the grave can break the promises that God has for each and every one of us that has been chosen. For these promises, we say, glory to God in the highest. We bless his holy name. For without his mercies, we could never attain unto this high office. Now many are here and our social media are questioning within them all minds and saying, is what we're saying biblical? Is what we're saying biblical? And um, first, I like to address the people on social media. It's um, Esther. She, so she's she's coming to run. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. First, I'd like to address uh, the people um, on social media who are with us for the first time. We are Beta Ministries. We believe it's paramount that we should stick to the Word of God and do not deviate from it, from His Word. We believe we should have precept upon precept. From Exodus to Revelation, we find the angels of God discharging great authority and power. So, this sermon is built upon the word of God without any deviation. So every promise that we are going to declare that God has for you is found in the word of God. So God timing is perfect. I'm telling you, God timing is perfect. So from Exodus to Revelation, we find angels charged with great authority and judgment and carrying out healing and putting curse upon men depending on their assignments they are sent out to fulfill. In the book of Kings, in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35, we find it's written. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians and a hundred and four score and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Hundred and eighty-five thousand men were slain by one, one angel. That's power and that's great authority that's power and that's great authority now what does the power and authority of angel have to do with you well by the grace of God we will be exalted to a position to judge listen we will be exalted by the grace of God, a promise to God, of God, that we will be exalted to judge even angels. And not only angels, but the world. And I said, God's time is very perfect because I wanted somebody to hear this. That means you will be judging people who have killed and murdered Christians. Everyone who has been selected by God and has been chosen by God, you will sit in judgment upon those that has afflicted you. You will judge the world with Christ. So there 
countries like Nigeria, where Christians have been slain on a regular, as I've been told many times. And people are saying, but where is God? God is sitting on his throne because he sees the day of the end of the wicked. He knows his time. And he said to us who are faithful in his word and walk in righteousness and holiness, do not worry about those who can kill the flesh. Because I am God. I am the one who killed not only the flesh, but the spirit. They might have slain you upon the earth in the flesh. But we hear the spirit of those slain crying out to God. How long, God, will you not take judgment upon those who have killed us? There is a time when those people who are slain Christians will see Jesus Christ sitting on the throne of judgment and the Christians, believers, sitting around him. They may even see somebody whom they have slain upon the earth looking back at them. Then they will know the fear of the Lord. Then they will know the fear of the Lord. Where is this promise in the scripture? Where do we find the promise that the saints shall judge the world? It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 to 3. Do he not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Knowing not that we shall judge angels, How much more things that pertain it to this life? How much more things that are pertaining to this life? That means all who are elected to inherit in Christ, all who are sharing in Christ's inheritance shall judge the world. Therefore, we shall judge Muslims, Buddhists, we shall judge Hindu and Haitis, we shall judge adulterers and murderers, thieves and fools and idolaters. We shall judge all manner of sin. Therefore, let us live righteously in case we come before our fellow brethren being judged by them. You are called by God and he's going to give you great, great authority. All the Muslims that stay Christians, one day they're going to appear before Christ and the Christians behind him. All the Hindus, the atheists, all of them, they will know that Christ is King of Kings and God has given all authority to judge. Therefore, we believe this word and are faithful unto death that we may receive the crown of life because our God who promise is faithful. Now we need to learn how to judge justly because God will not let you be a judge if you have unforgiveness in your heart or you are a racist or you have prejudice in your heart or you are a thief God does not like unjust 
judgment. Unjust judgment to God is an abomination. Therefore, Christ says, love one another. When you love and have no hate, you can judge justly, righteously, according to God's word. Because if you have unforgiveness in your heart, and the person who offended you appears before you, your heart will find him guilty, maybe even wrongly. Because what's in your heart. But if we do what Christ says and love our enemies and give them food if they're hungry and clothe them if they're naked, then if they repent not, it's like putting hot coals of fire upon their head. Trust God. God counsel is right and perfect every time. Whatever judgment you judge will return back unto you. So that's why you yourself must walk perfect that when the judgment return unto you, it will find nothing. Therefore, because you have to judge righteously, we at the Excel Ministries proclaim we should walk and live righteously in all our lives and every era of our life. We are declaring to the world that they should change and live righteously. Paul was not alone in revealing the glory that awaits us. But John in the book of Revelation told us of those who took part in the first resurrection who ruled and reigned with Christ. And our Lord and Savior said to the Jews who was contending with him in Matthew chapter 12 verse 27. And if I, by the hands of God, cast off devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judge. Here is a prime example why you cannot love your mom and dad more than you love the Lord because you will pass on just judgment if you love your mother or your father more than you love God. But if you love God more, you will always judge according to His ways. Righteously. So, when it said that your children will judge you, it was the apostles that was casting off demons at the time that is recorded in the New Testament. It was the apostles who were their children who would sit in judgment on them. And Christ said, when the Son of Man is risen and sit in his, upon his throne, then you will sit with me, talking to the apostles, and judging over the twelve tribe of Israel. You have been chosen for great authority. All the other Buddhist families, I'm declaring to you daily to walk in righteousness and holiness because of the glory and the promise that's set before you. I am determined to guide you in the paths of holiness and righteousness because that's where our Lord truly resides. I will not love you into hell, but I will faithfully chastise you into heaven. I will declare to you the unvarnished truth of God.
Lord. Because it's my burning desire to say to my Lord, of all thou hast given me, I have lost none. Upon the earth, men are judged by their peers. In heaven, we will judge angels who have been reserved in darkness because of the loss of the flesh. Let us therefore flee youthful lust and take our office reserved for us to sit in judgment. We will be able to judge angels because of the transformation that's taking place in us daily. For thou, the outward man perish, the inward man is going from glory to glory. Change is taking place within. We shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye, for we are the children of the resurrection. And Jesus said, in Luke chapter 20, verse 35 to 36. Speaking to the Pharisees, he says, But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that word and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry or given in marriage. Neither can they die anymore. For what? They shall be equal to the angels. Equal to the angels. Power and great authority is coming to those who are faithfully walking in righteousness and holiness. Therefore, being equal to the angel in power that God has given and will give unto us, we shall be able to judge them just like our man judge man. We are the child of God. Because you are being prepared to discharge great authority in due season when you have received the crown of life, after you have run the race set before you, therefore, child of God, keep pressing towards the mark of the high calling of God. For God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? God shall surely do it. Not even the grave can break his promises. So much promises lay before us. Let us transform our mind to meet the goal set before us. Paul is preparing us for the office of kings and priests. When he told us, Colossians chapter 3 verse 8. But now he also put up all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blaspheme, filthy, communication filthy communication out of your mouth for this behavior is not befitting of kings we must raise our standard to walk in the royal mindset of kings and we must execute righteousness and we must start execution of this righteousness in our hearts and minds first. For we know that the throne of all kings of God is establishing what? Righteousness. And as righteousness exalted the nation, so the king that is established in a righteousness is exalted. Look at our Lord and Savior.
who walk upon the earth in all righteousness and now is exalted above all. You cannot walk in unrighteousness because there is a certain expectation of kings. They cannot carry themselves waywardly, but they must display a high standard of morality to be a just king. Proverbs 1, in Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 34, verse Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 4. It is not for kings, O Elamiel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for prince strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert judgment of the afflicted. But it says in the next verse that if somebody is dying, give them drink that they may forget their sorrows. We have a higher standard to meet, because we are called to a higher office. You upon earth are working in whatever job you're working in, whatever field you're working in, but God wants to exalt you into a place of kingship. God wants to exalt you a place equal to angels. God has a plan for you to lift you up for promotion coming back from the east, not the west, not the south, but it's God. It is God who exalted and lift up and promotes. And God wants to promote all believers who walk in holiness and righteousness according to his word and according to his promise. Remember that our Lord made us kings and priests. Therefore, Live your life as a king waiting to be enthroned and as a priest waiting for his office. Because we walk by faith and not by sight, we believe what God has revealed to us in his word. We believe the following scriptures, Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 to 6. Promises for the saints. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, who had loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and had made us what? Kings and priests unto God his Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God who has done this for you and for me. Because we have believed. But let us lay hold on that which we have believed and walk in what? Holiness and righteousness. That we may collect and be enthroned and receive the crown that is for us. But first, we have to walk the walk. Not talk the talk. We have to walk the walk that's before us. And I know that some times in our life, when we think of our action, and we reflect on how we live our life, we cannot see this. But we must be like the faithful in the book of Hebrew, who not seeing the city, but believing God promised us, who not wanting a city of their own because God promised them, they believe and walk in faithfulness. Believe that God is able to bring these promise and fulfill them in your life in due season. Do not reflect on this awesome maturity that is going to be given unto us. Don't worry, but be confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you is faithful to bring it to pass in Jesus Christ. 
until his day. He that done it. The word of this world to get us impurity is the word of God and God working in us. Because you are being prepared to discharge great authority in due season, when you have received your crown of life and you have run the race set before you, therefore, child of God, keep pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God. For God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? God shall surely do it. Not even the grave can break his promises to you who have believed and sacrificed so much to follow God that your eyes cannot see. God is faithful. But the greatest, the greatest authority that shall deliver to be delivered to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is to be sons of God. We shall be as Christ. We shall be as Christ. Christ says in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, 24 to 25. Chapter 10, verse 24 to 25. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for disciples that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. As his Lord. If they have called the master of the house of Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Yes, it's enough for us to be as our Lord. And John also validated this. In John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. And it do not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when, we know that when, I said, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And this is the most important part for every believer. For everyone that's walking in after Christ. And every man that had this hope purify, purify himself, even as he, our Lord and Savior, is pure. That means if you have this hope and God has laid this before you, you put aside every, you put aside every sin that's besetting you, that's bringing you down. Because of the hope of the glory, because of the hope of the glory that God has laid before you, the authority that God has called you onto, the dominion that God wants to give you, the power God wants to place in your hand. If you believe God, you will do as Jesus said, the man in the parable, he went to the field and he found precious treasures in the field and he went home and sold all that he had so that he could buy a field because he considered that the treasures in the field was worth more than all that he had in his life. Because we have this hope, we teach everyone to walk in holiness and righteousness. For such an high calling is set before us. Whoa! Wow! Child of God. Understanding your purpose should energize you to cast down every imagination that opposes and exalts itself against the word of God. 
If you lay hold on the promise that God is setting up before you, if you really understand what God has called you to, then you will suppress and put down and resist every sin that easily casts us down. Look at this. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, they ate from the tree of good and evil. And God said, let us take away the tree of life. Lest they eat from, what, eat from it and become like what? Become like us. God said, let's take away the tree of life. Lest they come, become like us. So what God did, he put them out of the garden and put a cherubim around the tree of life that God did. Because if they ate it, they become like God's. Guess what? The greatest authority God is going to give you. You will become like God's. But do not get lifted up in your mind because our God is God of gods. Our God is God of gods. As it says, in, and God himself testified about us and about his people and his chosen, he said, and he's swearing to them in Psalms chapter 82, verse 6 to 7. He has said, God of his own mouth said, I have said, ye are gods, and all of whom are the children of the Most High. God says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of whom are the children of the Most High. If you remember when the Pharisees was tackling Jesus because he said he was the Son of God, he went and quoted the scriptures and said the scripture cannot be broken. I have said, he of God, and all of you know what, what can be? The children of the most high. You become God because you become part of the family of God. But the scripture goes on to say, but he shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Because of sin. But this verse shall not be fulfilled unto you. It shall not apply to you. Because why? Why shall this not verse apply to you? Because in that day you'll be found sinless. If you remain in the body of Christ, in that day you will be found sinless. Colossians chapter 1 verse 22 to 23. In the body of his flesh, through death, to pr pr present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If, if he continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. These promises are the hope of the gospel. The gospel is preached that man's sins will be forgiven and then God set promises and said, this is your hope. Which he have heard and which is preached to every creature which is under heaven. Wherefore, Paul, I, Paul, am made a minister. In the book of Revelation, I'll just divert for a minute. In the book of Revelation, John was being shown around by what he perceived was an angel. And he went down to worship him, and he said, Do not worship me, because I am of thy brethren, and of one of the prophets. Worship God. You see, he was in his glorified state. He has received his crown of life. He was transformed and equal unto the angels. That's why John thought he was an angel. But he was from 
the earth. He was redeemed of the first fruits of the earth. That's who he was. He was a brethren of John Israelites and of the prophets. The promises of God are real. The promises of God are faithful. We should press towards a sinless life. Christ lived a sinless life and when he saw the glory that was set before him, he laid on his life. And he received all power in heaven and on earth. We have not lived a sinless life. None of us have lived a sinless life. But let us lay down our sinful life. Let us lay down our sinful life and sinful lifestyle for the glory that's set before us. Just like our Christ, who lived a sinless life, saw the glory of God set before him and he laid down his life. Let's be his disciples and lay down our sinful life and our sinful lifestyle for the glory and the calling and the promises that God has called you to. Because you are being prepared for great authority. You are being prepared to discharge great authority in due season when you have received the crown of life. After you have run the race, you have to take part in the race. And if you're running the race, you have to resist sin. If you're running the race, you have to live a lifestyle worthy of kings. If you are running the race, you have to live a lifestyle worthy of a priest. If you are running the race, your fruits must show that you are in the race. Do you know, Christ says, the false prophets before him is briars and thorns. You know what's briars and thorns? If you go back to Genesis, you know what Brides and Thorns is. When Adam and Eve sinned, God cursed the ground. And what came up? Briars and Thorns. Briars and Thorns are cursed children. We do not want to be Briars and Thorns. But we want to bring forth righteous fruits. The planting of our God. We want to be the planting of our God. When God plants something, He plants it in righteousness. He always plants things in righteousness. Therefore, let us live our life as a tree planted by God. Let us shake off the fruits of unrighteousness and produce righteous fruits worthy of repentance. Let us glorify our God with our life and magnify Him by the way we live our life. Let's put away every evil communication from our mouth. Let's not have loose lips. But let's satisfy even our lips. James said, can bitter water and sweet water come forth from the same mouth, from blessing and curse from the same mouth. It's not supposed to be so. Let us serve our God in righteousness and holiness and lay hold of the promises that he has set before you. You are called to be the son and daughters of the living and mighty God. You are called to be kings. You are called to be equal unto the angels. You are called to be priests to serve God. You are called to high mighty office. It's all yours. God has already set it before you. All you have to do is walk to it and connect it. Do not deviate into the broad world, but stay on the narrow path of salvation. Stay on it and bring forth fruits, meat for repentance. And God, God Almighty, will rejoice with the angels with you for his son has come home.
is watching you, is waiting, is rooting for you to make the right choice day by day by day by day until we we'll make it home and he can throw his arms around us and give us a new garment and clothe us in righteousness. He's watching. The angels are rooting for you. They want you to make it. They want you to win. Make the right choice. Follow righteousness and holiness. And you will never fail. Hold on to Christ. And follow the ways of our God. And you shall never fail. You shall collect that crown that is waiting for you with your name written upon it. You shall get a stone with your name written upon it. So many promises are there before us. You shall dwell in a city made of gold where the street is paved with gold. So much promises are there before us. Let us not cast it away for temporary satisfaction. Lay your mind and your heart on things above and put your treasure there. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Let's pray. All right, just God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we thank you for everyone here. I ask you, righteous God, as they sit where they are, and ask you to hear their prayers and their supplications. If anyone here sitting and saying, oh God, I, I really want to walk this way, I really want to come up to you. Oh God, touch their life, oh God. Sanctify them and cleanse them from their sins. Let them feel the joy, the unspeakable joy to be with you, oh God. Give them a hope of your glory and set them in the path of life, oh God. Deliver them and everyone that's on YouTube who's watching this video. Oh God, if they say in their heart they want to turn to righteousness and holiness and lay hold on the promises, hear their cry, answer the prayer, and grant them the request of their lips and give them the hope of your glory. Plant it in their hearts that they will never depart for things of this world. O oh, righteous God, we bless you for your, your everlasting truth that's always amongst us. We thank you, God, that you give us the wisdom to search it out. It is you who reveal all things to us. We are nothing before you. We're nothing. But it's you, O oh God, who impart unto us wisdom. Everyone that's here that has received some information from you, it is you, O oh God, that does it. We bless you, O oh God. We glorify you. We magnify your name. We thank you for sending your only begotten Son that we can believe upon him and become sons and daughters of you, God, to become your child through Christ. We bless you, O oh God. We bless you and we thank you for all that you have done and what you're about to do. We glorify your name. Thank you, O oh God. We bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Thanks to God for this sermon. Wonderful uh, sermon. Very important message being given here. Walk in righteousness and holiness. And as you can see in the scriptures where these promises are made to us. And we just have to believe and walk that road of endurance until we get there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody should be uplifted like this. <laughs> It's always the best place to come in time of need, I believe, uh, the Word of God in the Scriptures. Uh, this is why I enjoy uh, our Bible study, uh, which we do uh, every Thursday. One day, one of these Thursdays, I'm sure Sister Esther is going to join us. <laughs> 730. We're waiting for you. <laughs> when you come by God's grace, I'm sure you will. Um, wonderful. Uh, I always uplift myself through the Word of God, even when dark times. And then um, we go into the scriptures, and some message is delivered unto you, and you feel like it hits you and you uplift you. It's always the right place to be. Uh, we give glory to God. Because without Him, uh, we can never endure that journey. We'll fall away. Yeah? 
So we thank you for coming here today. Uh, our next sermon out here will be on the 9th of November, uh, 12 o'clock. Uh, we're looking to be on time this time. Uh, we do apologize for our lateness today. Uh, thank you for coming out. Thank you, Kyle, Corey, the kids. Well, be here today. Is so anyone that comes in today, came in today, um, next time you come, invite a friend or somebody to come along. Uh, pretty sure someone will want to come to hear the word of the Lord. Um, just a reminder of our podcast every day. I think it's very exciting. Okay, the podcast is on the link uh, on WhatsApp. And the very first bit of the link where you see we have to have ministries, you just click on it, it'll take you straight to the page and where you can just press play and then you'll hear that podcast, that wonderful podcast. Also within that same link or that same text you will see the daily bread written on there which got some wonderful um, words. This week was absolutely brilliant. Uh, all every week is always brilliant, but this week I went into archive <laughs> all the stuff I got on there. Yeah, so it's on there uh, to follow as well. Don't forget the website as well. You can go on the website and lead everybody to the website. And let's not forget YouTube. We got so much videos that you can always relate back to. Um, I'm sure this video will be put up by tomorrow as well. This sermon uh, for our friends, and family, and want to watch or follow on YouTube. So send that word of encouragement. We are in that time. We are in the end time, and. No one is assured that they're going to rise tomorrow. So do the best that you can today, whilst today is called today. 